early, we uh, smashed a back workout, uh, nothing crazy as a deload. And now we're heading to Saskatoon because I'm getting my injections into my ankles. Uh, long story short, I broke my ankles in 2010. Uh, it was a workplace accident. Fell off of uh, the second story of a house off of the floor. Um, yeah, long story short. Why did I fall? Uh, I was going through a lot of health issues, guys, at that point in time. I'll have to save that for a podcast or something. But um, kind of self-induced health issues. Um, a lot of drinking, a lot of party mode, a lot of recreational drugs. Um, so I wasn't really, I wasn't functioning properly. Probably shouldn't have been working really. But uh, anyways, we are heading to Saskatoon, uh, getting these injections. I usually get them about every three-ish months. Instead, in Turkey, uh, I signed with the modeling agency there. What it's looking like going first. So I don't know when I'll actually be back to be able to get more injections, but uh, whatever. Deal with it. I have a severe degenerative arthritis in both ankles. Uh, my surgeon is literally like, dude, your ankles are trash. You need surgery. So I'm just prolonging surgery as long as possible because what will it, what it end up being would be uh, fusion of basically the subtalar joint. So I lose a lot of inversion and eversion, a lot of like inversion and eversion. I would still have a lot of plantar and dorsiflexion, but yeah. So then more limited range of motion. I would be pain free, but I would have limited range of motion, more limited. Um, and that could just lead to knee issues, hip issues, things like that, back issues. So we are trying to prolong surgery as long as possible. Also surgery is like one, year per leg to get um, if I was to actually do the surgery for the rehab it's like one year per leg I would literally need two years of my life just to sit around and do fucking rehab so we ain't doing that probably never um, unless until like when I'm a billionaire and I can sit around working home and not have to worry about when I'm old and fucking squat anymore. <laughs> Probably still always squat. Anyways, uh, usually I stay overnight in a hotel, spend the night uh, in Saskatoon. I usually kind of try and make it a relaxing weekend, but it seems like every time I go there, something's always come up. My agent literally was just like, I have an audition for you for this TV show, for this role in this TV television show. They're asking if you can do the audition today at like 3 p.m. Zoom time. I'm like, I'm gonna be in Saskatoon. My appointment's at 3 p.m. So it's like, it's always crazy like this. Man. This is at no like fault or anything of my agent. This is she's passing on the information, and they're actually. Um, that's just the way that it is. They speed it up. It's always just like, let's go, 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 go. And then you never hear from them. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I'm gonna have to do this audition tomorrow. I have the lines with me. I literally print the lines out at home. Um, so I got the lines with me and we're just gonna be basically running through this scene. I got the lines somewhere. We're gonna be running through this scene, basically on this whole drive, working on my expressions. Um, and then we're gonna try and record this tomorrow. <gasps> tomorrow, they're filming this TV commercial, uh, TV show in May. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> it's actually right up my alley, guys. <laughs> oh, wait till you see if I get this, for, when I get this role. Wait, it's perfect, actually. That's why my agent was excited, too. She's like, you're so perfect for this role. So, anyways, hit the Saskatoon, guys. I was gonna do a little bit of like raw vlogging, uh, but I got this audition. So I'm gonna be probably working on that <laughs> after my uh, appointment, after my seeing my surgeon. So 
I don't know how exciting it's going to be. This raw belt log, we will see. Um, either way, come along with me. I'll show you the hotel. I'll show you the injection before and after. I don't know if I can record in the actual procedure room. We can actually record, um, or at least get a photo or a video of the x-ray of the needle going in, maybe. Uh, you'll be able to see the hardware in my ankles, maybe. If not, I'll at least show you the injection sites after. <laughs> show you my hotel and whatever else I get up to. So stick around, guys, and I'll catch you soon. We have been injected. <laughs> we have been injected. I have been I have been injected. Um it's a bit low this camera. So <laughs> crazy shit. Crazy shit. Um, crazy. Aside from everything, <laughs> I'm not surprised. This is the way that it, this is the way that it is. But it's just hilarious. Uh, when I was literally packing stuff up to get out the door to come to Saskatoon to get these injections, my agent was just like, "Oh my god, I have this audition for you." She originally had hoped to get me this audition for this role. Then, um, TV show that she was hoping that I could get this role. Then it was like, no, there's no union spots left. Um, there's already a lot of reoccurring roles, so there's no real spots left. Um, then asked if I wanted to do, if I would be interested in doing some background. Background work can be good money. It's really good for networking though, uh, would be the reason why I would be doing it. Also, it's depending on the um depending on the project it can be pretty good money too especially if it's like multiple days in a row kind of strung together it's good money um but so the, so it went from maybe i can get you a casting an audition to never mind all the roles have already been taken they're reoccurring roles there's no union roles left for union actors then it turned into background um if, if I was interested in doing any background. Then it turned into, oh my God, I have an audition for you for that same role that I wanted to you to audition for. <laughs> um, so I got the sides, I got the lines, I was memorizing, the, memorizing them this whole drive up here, working on the expression, working on it all. Um, get into the hospital, get my injections. Uh, the surgeon was asking me what's new. I'm like, oh, I got this audition. I was memorizing it on the way here, blah, blah, blah. You know, they wanted it done maybe if I could do it today. I got it like 12 noon. It was like, do you, can you do this audition maybe three o'clock today? Uh, Zoom call style or whatever. Um, I was like, well, I can see my surgeon, whatever. So, okay, okay. Maybe tomorrow, Saturday at the latest by noon or whatever. So it's typical. Um, very, very short notice. So I get back in my car and the audition has once again been it's taken away now they confirmed some guy who originally they who they had originally um had in mind i guess production and they already know this guy so it sounds like he's got the role so now the role that i was going for is no longer available again <laughs> So I don't know what that means. Maybe it, maybe it means I go back to background. I don't know. The funny thing about doing background though is when there's actual roles in the show, because last time I did background, I actually auditioned for a lead role. Last time I did background, I auditioned for a lead role in this project. Uh, it was a TV series as well. I didn't get the role um, for multiple reasons. Um, but then I got offered the background and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go do the background because I want to see the actor that they chose for the role that I auditioned for. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because as as they as they were filming the scene, as we were filming the scene, and I was doing background work in the in the in the, in the scenes, um, I knew the lines of the character that was. I knew the lines of the man of the character that I auditioned for. So it was pretty funny, and it was just interesting how they casted him. Um, and not me for, I mean, a million different reasons. What what I'm saying is it was interesting the way that he was playing the character and delivering the lines and things, which was actually like completely different from what I had in mind. 
Um, so it's kind of crazy. But anyways, so no audition now. So it's time to turn up to Tinder. <laughs> Trying to turn on my hot spot for Tinder and for Bumble. I'm gonna turn on all my hot spots. So my hot spots. And um, get a swipe in, you feel me? <laughs> Kidding. Um, I'm going to head to the hotel. Um, I got, I'm going to do a bunch of, I'm going to do, I got some client work now because I had this audition. I got a whole bunch of shit guys, clothing stuff. Um, UPS called me today. That's crazy. I got that set up UPS, uh, crazy saving like 52%. Like guys, we're going extreme with the clothing. Um, anyways, I'm rambling. I'm going to catch you guys. We'll, I uh, we'll see you guys at the hotel. Oh, I took pictures of my ankles of the, of the, of the, uh, um, of the injuries. So now everyone can see. I'll put them in the video. Check them out. Yo, what's going on, guys? So we are heading back to the hotel. Um, I was doing some Instagram stories, so I just want to make sure I vlogged on here, but you will see, you will see the little bit of ink in between the hairline joints to where I literally have no joints left. He, he, the surgeon injects the ink, um, then that way he can see where the joint is because the joints are literally like, there's no joints left. I have no joints left. My entire ankle and foot, foot bones, ankle bones, subtalar joint, navicular joint, talus, guys, they're all trash, okay? I need surgery on both. It's literally one year of rehab per foot. I do not have time for that, but I'm also told it's inevitable. Um, there will be a come a time where the pain is too much, um, when these shots no longer work anymore. So he, and he, he injects the black ink in there into each ankle and then he injects, uh, the corticoid. It's not cortisone, but it's corticoid. It's a, it's a corticoid, part of the corticoid family. It really brings down inflammation. Um, so it's basically cortisone. <laughs> Brings out information. They use it to treat cancers, um, stuff like that. If it was like, they might even do it like intravenously to treat certain cancers and things. For me, it's direct right into the spot. It doesn't circulate through my body. If that makes sense. It's localized in one spot. So I don't have generally the side effects that would come along with something of that nature, which would be like suppressed autoimmune, probably um, hormonal endocrine types issues. Um, yeah, because you need inflammation too. Uh, you, you couldn't build muscle. Um, I'm already skinny enough. Anyways, guys, we're going to head to the hotel. Um, come with me. I don't know what I'm going to get up to now. I have an audition. I don't have an audition anymore, but I got a lot of work. But I think I'm actually going to run around, take my camera around. Um, get my ankles moving a bit, walk around town for a little bit. So I might actually see if I can, I think there's a, I'm downtown here. And I think there's a sport check downtown, maybe in midtown. I want to pop into the sport check because I have a client who, uh, we're, we want to get her some Olympic lifting shoes, the lifted heel, the Olympic lifting, the oldie shoes. Um, it's been hard to find because she's petite, um, and she needs like a size zero <laughs> i don't uh actually she doesn't need that small of a size it's a pretty standard size i want to say it's like a size six or something so it's like lots of women have size six but anyways i might do that so and then i still got some client check-ins uh i got some stuff to deal with ups because we're taking clothing next level i've got designs t-shirt designs uh, i've got orders sample orders my athletes my sponsored athletes all kinds of stuff guys so
Whoa, 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 whoa. 183.2. Insane. That's insane, guys. Hmm. Let me explain. Oh, I'm stuck. I almost showed my wiener. Good morning, fam. Good morning. Um, so I got my hospital band on. We are, <clears throat> we went at 183. I'm actually tired. I was gonna lay down here for a second. We went in at 183. We went at 183.2 this morning. Which is crazy, because yesterday, yesterday I weighed uh, like 190-ish. So you gotta keep in mind, you gotta know. So, Yesterday, I think I weighed about 190. 190 or slightly over 190. I can check, I tracked this, of course. Um, today, I weighed 183.2, so I, so I was down like seven pounds. Now, it's not all body fat either, um, at all, really. Seven pounds of body fat. I would have lost some, I would have burned some fat yesterday because I was up quite early. Um, I definitely expended more calories than what I normally eat in a typical day. Um, but we don't change trying to eat more necessarily on days that we have higher activity. Or on say like rest days, we don't generally eat less. You can. Some people do have their nutrition set up that way. It's not wrong. Um, you realize it's not right. You realize it's just no different. Because if you have, you know, I don't know, four normal days and one high day and two low days a week, because that's seven, four, five. Um, over the course of seven days, it's still the same. And yes, you can say like you're on a rest day, you burn less calories and you um, and you on workout days, you need more calories for recovery. I mean, you would have so then your normal days, if you if you if you just if your days were just straight through and you didn't have like, say, four normal days, one high day and one low day on a rest day of calories, macros, calories. Um, my actual normal days would be higher in calories than if I had a high day and then a low day because mine would just be straight through average the entire the entire way through. Um, and, you know, and often on rest days, I find myself almost hungrier. Um, and it's good to get food in on rest days for recovery too. So it's debatable. It's really splitting hairs. Um, I just keep days straight through because it keeps things more simple. Um, I can do day trading if I wanted to, day trading my macros. I'll keep that for another video. Anyways, two, 183.2, we are in Saskatoon. We are at the hotel. Um, we slept in, guys, because I was wrecked. I stayed up pretty late the last two nights. Uh, I think I had like three or three hour, four hour sleep the night before. I was up trying to wrap clothes, send all packages. You will see. I actually vlogged that, so raw vlog that, so you'll see. Um, that'd be the next vlog. Um, so we're gonna rock and roll guys, it's nine. I slept in wait, I slept in the late, but I needed it. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do is I actually brought, it's meat rock a day, coincidentally enough. Um, and it's a leg day, me training my legs right after my injections. I'll show you guys a video of what the injection sites as well. Um, but I did bring my leg stuff, it's deload. So everything's cut in half, so it's easy. Um, well, easy-ish, it's still heavy, just half the volume. I'm gonna try and, I think I might go and see, uh, jump it, hop over to Snap Fitness today, get a workout done in Saskatoon here. Um, then that way when I get in the car, 
and get back home, just more relaxed, more chill. I don't have to get a workout in. I don't have to try and get a workout in mid-afternoon or something. I just wanna get it done. So I'll pay the drop in, I think. I'm assuming I can get in there. Um, yeah, rock and roll. All right, guys, you can see the one injection there. Now, I'll take it off. I'm gonna try and be flexible because uh, this hurts. But yeah, you can see the injection site. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. See if I can. Uh, blood you can see the original injection site that's a scar um, that where it was cut in order to do the surgery in order to do the um, in order to do to get the screws in there ouch okay we'll do the next leg and there's the left one. This one was actually the worst break. Um, let's see if I can get my leg up here. A little bit of blood. This one doesn't seem to be as bothered as the other one. Anyways, what is going on guys? We are obviously not in gym clothes because I called the gym and there's apparently no one on staff today on a Friday morning. I don't know. There's no one on staff. That's what their answering machine said. So we're going back to Regina. Uh, I'll probably hit a leg workout there, I guess. Ah, it'll be later in the afternoon, but whatever. That's what we do. So maybe I'll vlog a little bit of the rest of this day. And I'll probably do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just did some progress videos, progress pictures in the hotel. Because I knew I was going to be stupid shredded. And this is what happens, guys, when you stick to the plan no matter what. When you stick to the plan no matter what. Okay? Guys, this is what happens regardless of what's happening. You stick to the plan. Whether you were up late before. I was up late last night. Uh, the night before. I was up early this morning yesterday. Uh, went to the gym still. Stuck to the plan, traveled all day, brought some food with me, um, hit my macros. This is what happens when you stick to the plan. You get results like this, okay? You just stick to the plan regardless of what's going on, 99% of the time. When you can't stick to the plan, then there's st strategic things that you can do, and that's where a coach would help for sure, um, to keep you from doing silly things or extremes. Uh, but anyways, this is what happens when you stick to the plan. When you stick to the plan, you get results. I didn't um, overeat a bunch of food yesterday because I was traveling. I used it as an excuse. I didn't overeat a bunch of food yesterday because I knew my activity was going to be higher than normal. Um, and I was going to burn more calories. Um, no, because today I knew that I was going to sleep in today probably. And today would be a less active day. And I'm going to eat the same, so it's all going to balance out the same way over the course of 48 hours. And it simpli simplifies things. And there's none of this like fasting now or carbs at this time, carbs at that time. That's over complicating things, guys, 99% of the time, okay? Um, majority of the fit population does not need to be concerned about meal timing at all, zero. So 
Um, yeah, this is what happens when we stick to the plan. Hit the macros, um, stick to the gym, get the workouts in, get shit done. Um, Cause you're gonna have, you are going to reap a little bit of fat loss benefits like I did yesterday, being on a, um, burning a little bit more calories, but I also sat in the vehicle for a three hour drive, remember? Um, so you can reap the benefits of a little bit of fat loss. Woke up shredded today, right? Now, there's gonna be a rebound, okay? So today, I'm probably going, I'm up later, so I'm gonna be eating later, I'm gonna be drinking water later. I might even get to, probably even get to bed later because I slept in. So when I weigh in tomorrow, I'm not gonna be as shredded, I'm not gonna be, I'm probably gonna be, I, I dropped like seven pounds and I'll probably jump up a back, back, jump up, somewhere back up between another three to four pounds, maybe half of that. Um, <clears throat> but because my, Activity was a little bit higher yesterday, and we just stuck to the macros. Uh, over time, the more times you do that, you're gonna to continue to reap a little bit of uh, fat loss benefits, body composition improvements. That's why most people don't get to the physique or say like to the level of abdominal definition that they want, is because they're not patient enough, they're too extreme, they're trying to change too many things when it's just tiny little things add it up. Anyways, heading back guys. Catch you guys soon. Ciao. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro.